In this screencast, uh, we'll uh, uh, talk about uh, decoding uh, girdle numbers. In other words, uh, given a girdle number, uh, we will uh, extract the source code of the program that that number encodes. So to review, uh, we, um, in the previous uh, couple of screencasts, uh, talked about um, uh, girdle coding. So we take uh, the program, in the language, give it to the kernel pro, uh, uh, coder and uh, obtain uh, the kernel, the number of that uh, program, a natural number. So now we're going to go uh, in uh, uh, the other direction. So from uh, the number of the program to the source code. So uh, this is um, the computer science equivalent of this operation is uh, reverse compilation. And the invari uh, invariant is that if we take the girdle coder and the girdle uh, decoder, apply it to the result of the girdle coder, we're going to get the source um, uh, code of the program. So and that's our decoding invariant. So there are several uh, steps um, to um, uh, girdle decoding. Uh, first, uh, we have to uh, obtain the number of the uh, source code. So, uh, the, the natural number that encodes all of the instructions uh, of the uh, uh, program, compiled program. Uh, second, we need to extract uh, the number of uh, uh, each individual uh, instruction, um, the numbers of individual instruction, and from those numbers um, extract the actual source code of each instruction. The source code from um, each instruction number. Now, um, we have to deal with um, the ambiguity of uh, girdle numbers. If you remember, we can uh, pad zeros to the girdle number on the right, and the girdle number uh, will not change. The value of the girdle number will not change. So. What is the number of the instruction a y arrow y, right? So this um, no op or self assignment, it's zero. So um, if um, we pad this instruction to the end of our program, uh, the meaning of the program and the compiled number of the program will not change. So we will adopt the convention that uh, this instruction may not be the last instruction uh, of uh, any uh, legal program. So that way, uh, we avoid uh, the padding phenomenon. We don't have to deal with it. Um, so, uh, in other words, if we have a program, and this is a girdle number, this is the number of the first instruction, this is the number of the second instruction, and this is the number of uh, some instruction number k, um, so, and then um, we're going to pad it with zeros, so this is the number of this uh, y arrow y instruction, this is also the number of y arrow y instruction, this is also the number y arrow y instruction, so this will not be uh, permitted. So let me grab a different color, so this will not, and there, there's no loss of generality here because this is, this instruction does not change the um, value, uh, the behavior of the program, um, but it does allow us to uh, make the statement that every P is mapped to a unique uh, natural number. Okay, so um, let's focus on the task of obtaining the source code number. So we're given the number of the uh, program, and that number, by definition, is this girdle number where 
uh, each element uh, encodes uh, the corresponding instruction in terms of the power of corresponding uh, prime minus one. Uh, so uh, the uh, source code number, right, what is the source code number? Well, it's um, this uh, girdle number. So the source code number is equal to the number of the program the number of the program plus one. And that gives us this, uh, the value of this girdle number. Now let's review prime factorization. Um, those of you who have not watched can watch a couple of uh, screencasts on the unique, uh, uh, the fundamental theorem of uh, arithmetic. Um, just to get some background, um, but um, we will need uh, the prime factorization. The fact that um, uh, each um, natural number has a unique a prime, a unique prime factorization. So let n be a natural number greater than zero, and I uh, let i be the uh, prime counter. Well, okay, the number of the um, it's the i-th prime, right? So if i is 1, then p sub i, the first prime is 2, and then if uh, the second uh, prime mm, for i2 is um, um, the second prime, p sub 2 is equal to 3, and etc. Right? This is p sub i is a primitive recursive function, as we have discovered before. So we are uh, going to define uh, this function factors um, takes um, n and i, and uh, if n is a prime, prime is also a primitive recursive function, we can test for primality um, pretty easily, then, um, well, the list of prime factors is just 10, right? <coughs> now, if um, n is um, composite, Any natural number is either prime or a composite, so if uh, n is not a prime, then by uh, definition n must be composite, then n, um, uh, then if uh, p uh, sub i, the ith prime, divides n, uh, that means that uh, p sub i is a factor, uh, so we, um, uh, we're going to add p sub i to the list of factors and recursively call factors. Um, to the list of uh, uh, factors and uh, recursively call factors with the first value um, um, of n divided by uh, p sub i, so we factored it out, so um, <coughs> and then i. We can still try to divide one more time. If uh, p sub i, uh, the i-th prime, does not divide n, uh, then um, we just have to go to the next prime. Uh, recursively uh, just keep the value of n. Uh, so p sub i is not a factor, so we keep the value of n and increase, uh, go to the next prime. So here, now uh, let's um, <coughs> consider a, a quick example. Um, let's um, call factors on the value of 8. Right, and we'll always start with the first prime, which is 2. And, um, <coughs> well, p sub 1 mm, is 2, 2 uh, divides 8, so 2 is a factor. Um, so we add 2 to the um, recursive call of uh, factors, 2 um, uh, factors. Um, of 8 divided by 2 and 1. Um, so uh, factors, uh, which is factors of 4 and uh, and 1, then um, p sub 1 is 2, so 2 mm, divides 4, so 2 um, is uh, another factor, and this time we will um, add another uh, 2 to um, the factors of 
4 divided by 2 and 1, we still keep the first prime and write on it because it keeps dividing our n. So factors uh, to 1, but 2 is a prime itself, so it, it is its own factorization, so we just return 2. So what is the list of uh, factors that um, we have computed? Well, it's um, 2, 2, and 2. So it's 2, 2, and 2. So here is a list, uh, 2, 2, and 2. Right, so this is this is not a real number. This is just a list of uh, factors. So this is a quick Python implementation. Uh, well, you may safely skip it. As for those of you who are, are following our Python discussion on this channel, mm, this is how you can implement quickly implement uh, factors. So <coughs> this is the implementation, um, the predicate, the test for primality, then the next function is uh, generator, then the next function nth prime computes uh, p sub i, uh, and uh, finally factors of n actually computes the factors by calling uh, factors um, aux um, n and i. Um, so factors of um, 8 is 2, 2, 2, and um, factors 13 is 13, and then factors of this number is this. Um, this is 200,000, I guess. So let's take another. Uh, <coughs> 10256, so that's, um, now we can test uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 641 is equal 10256. Okay, we'll continue with this.